Find the appropriate form of yp for the method of undetermined coefficients to solve the following differential equation. Method of undetermined coefficients requires you to find a complementary solution first, so let's do that. You start with the characteristic equation. The coefficients are 1, 6, and 13, so you write down um, r squared plus 6r plus 13 equal to 0. And this can be solved either using the quadratic formula or completing the square. I prefer completing the square because 6 divided by 2 is just 3, which is not a hard number to do. Uh, and uh, 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 4 gives you 13, so it must be 4 equal, equals 0 here. And now I can subtract the 4, both sides, to get r plus 3 squared equals to negative 4. And now you have to take the square root, but if you take the square root of a negative number, you get the imaginary number i. Square root of 4 is 2, so you will end up with 2i on the right side. So you have r plus 3 equals to plus or minus. Don't forget the plus and minus. And then 2i. So uh, we solve for r. We get r equals to negative 3 plus or minus 2i. And that means your complementary solution is equal to e to the negative 3x, where you use this negative 3, the real part goes in here, and then c1 of cosine 2x plus c2 sine 2x. And uh, although this is fine, and in many cases, this is the better way to write things. Uh, for our purpose, it's actually easier if you expanded this to see that actually y complementary is two, two solutions, where the, one of them is this one. So let's move this over here. And then uh, let's remove that one. And I need this over here as well. OK, so you see that if I multiply this to inside, you will get this, right? Now, uh, now let's build the yp for our purposes. So yp should be some function where you plug into the left side to produce these functions. And let's think about what functions I will need to produce each of these functions. So first of all, I need the something times sine 2x. And when you do undetermined coefficients, you're putting some undetermined coefficient in front. And therefore, the coefficient that's on the right side, we don't care. Okay, You just do that. So you have a times sine of 2x plus, uh, and then you also have to include all the derivatives of, of this function. And if you differentiate sine 2x, you get the 2 cosine 2x. Again, don't forget, uh, don't worry about the 2 in front, just do cosine 2x. And if you differentiate cosine, you get sine again with some minus. So uh, it's just back and forth. So uh, to, to create sine 2x, uh, the group of functions that will be responsible for creating this will be these two. Okay? They belong to the same group because if you start from this and you keep differentiating, you just get this and this. All right? Okay, next, to create x times e to the negative 3x sine 2x, you would need the original function itself. So I'll put c. And uh, if you differentiate this using the product rule, at some point this will be differentiated to give you 1, and you will just get this, this other one, right? So uh, that one has to be there as well. So uh, I will need something that, that's without the x. So I'm going to put a d there. And then plus, uh, anytime you have the sine, you will have to pair it with the cosine. Uh, and you know that because if you start from here and differentiate this using the product rule, eventually this sine will turn into cosine, right? So I'll need the cosine here. But now uh, I should have put, put e there. Okay. And other, again, if you differentiate this, you're, you're going to get x will become 1. And therefore, 
you are going to also get uh, something without the X okay and then you, you, if you further differentiate this you only get uh, these terms or either sine 2x or cosine 2x so they, they, these four functions they form one group because if you start from this function and you keep differentiating over and over again they produce this 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 and all of these uh, are responsible for creating this one right here okay now let's move on to the next one uh, to get the x squared you will need to put a no, uh, f g x squared and if you differentiate x squared you get 2x forget about the 2 it's just x so you put h x and then if you differentiate x you get 1 so it must be i times 1 right so all seems to be good uh, this last three functions will be responsible for creating x squared these four functions these four functions will be responsible for creating the middle one and the first two will be responsible for creating the first one however uh, after building your yp you always have to compare with the yc to see if any of these terms are going to be in vain meaning that uh, you can see that you have e to the negative 3 sine 2x here let me mark it red and this one here is the same right so what does that mean because yc complementary functions are such that if you plug into the left side it becomes zero it produces zero on the right side this one here is in danger because uh, if you plug it in you're only going to produce zero and therefore this would be in vain uh, so you have to strengthen it okay so you, you have to beef up this function you beef it up by strengthening it how do you strengthen something you put an x in front so you put an x in front and same thing goes for this one uh, the cosine 2x uh, th this one right here right this function is duplicated in here so anytime there's a duplication you put an x there to strengthen it uh, however let me put this back into black okay so put it back to black however once you strengthen some terms sometimes it's also true that it overlaps with the other one see I have this function but that's already in here so that has to be strengthened as well so you have to strengthen this one you beef it up by putting another X you beef up this one because uh, now these two overlap right so you beef up this one and then now there's no duplication inside yp there's no duplication between yc and yp so everything's good and therefore this is the final answer so that's uh all the ideas uh, now here, here's a slight different take uh sometimes uh people would just instead of writing all this uh, they might just say so let's go let's rewind before du duplication uh, let's forget the fact that we had uh, multiplied by X uh, just delete this so what I want to say is that to to produce this one you need CX but then when you differentiate X by one uh, X it becomes one so you need a D and you put them together and if you do it this way then there's a lot less writing right and same thing here you can just delete this and put ex plus f so I can just put ex plus f and then uh, if you write like this then it's slightly harder to see the duplication but again you see that d times this will du be duplicated of this f times this will be a duplicate of this therefore they both have to be strengthened so you beef it up by putting an x here you beef it up by putting an x here and this is exactly the same as what, what's above here if you simplified it but uh, sometimes uh, people like this one better than the other so uh, whichever you like uh, choose that and that's the correct answer